In 1 John chapter 5, uh, it talks about how the, 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 the ruler of darkness, right, the enemy, the devil, that he is at work in our world right here and right now. And therefore, I think one of the primary ways that the kingdom of God can be slowed down because it cannot be stopped. I'm going to say it one more time. The way the kingdom of God can be slowed down because it cannot be stopped. The kingdom of God will always advance forward no matter who is in a presidential office, no matter what the circumstances look like around you. The kingdom of God ushers and moves forward. In the first century, when the church exploded and grew at the most rapid rate it's ever grown, it existed in a culture where if you claimed the name of Jesus, you would be thrown into a coliseum to be eaten by lions. The kingdom of God cannot be stopped. But the enemy wants to slow it down. How could he slow it down? Get you and I to waste our time. And I think that there's two primary ways when it comes to communicating truth that I can find myself, and maybe you, wasting time. It's a spectrum with two equal and opposite errors on each side. When it comes to communicating truth, I think that we can find ourselves doing one of two things, weaponizing truth or minimizing truth weaponizing truth. This is when you value winning an argument over winning a soul. I want to prove to you why I'm right and why you're wrong. When we use truth as a weapon, we are primarily focused, I think, in those moments on us being right. And if I could even just bring you into my heart, I wouldn't project this on you, but I'll tell you what goes on in me. This right here is because of my ego. I want to be right. I love the look on your face when I show you how wrong you are. I love that moment where I've got you stuck in an argument and you don't know how to get out. And then the Lord gave me children <laughs> who love to weaponize the truth against me. <laughs> Rosie, we don't say that. I thought you said that the other day to mommy. <laughs> Thank you for that, Rosie. Weaponize truth. I'm going to be more fixated and focused on me being right than your heart changing. Don't mishear me. I'm not saying that you don't still talk about truth. I'm saying that there's a way to do it without weaponizing it. But the equal and opposite error in this is minimizing truth. I'll speak in a moment. I think some of us can find ourselves here no matter how old we are, no matter what generation we're a part of. Let me just speak to those of us who are closer to my generation. I think this is one of the primary ways we are failing as followers of Jesus. Here's why. I think we found ourselves, I found myself watching a generation weaponize truth. Talk about those who we disagree with, even from behind a pulpit and demonize them and demean them. So I can find myself wanting to not be that and so then I overcorrect and I become someone who doesn't weaponize truth but instead I minimize it. I apologize for it. I can find myself speaking boldly about certain truths of Jesus and shying away from other truths that are not as palatable. Thinking that if I cannot offend you with Jesus' truth, I can convince you to enter into a relationship with him. How naive and how unwise is that of me? Because what I'm basically telling you is come fall in love with someone, but I'm only going to show you half of them. Why are people deconstructing their faith? Why do people try so hard to believe in Jesus only to fall away? I think oftentimes it's because the way that we have portrayed him is that we have portrayed a minimized version of him. And any minimization of who Jesus is is a misrepresentation of who he is. You can minimize truth. 